Over the past two months, I have been going down the rabbit hole of split mechanical keyboards using an alternative layout called MTG AP. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the layouts that I use on each of these keyboards. It's basically the same layout, but since my Lily 58 has more keys, I tend to use other keys on the number row. But I ended up actually, as you can see, removing the switches from the number row because I don't use it at all. Uh, the other keyboard that I have on me here is the Piantor keyboard, which is my latest acquisition. Uh, I wanted to try two things, the chalk switches and the aggressive pinky stagger right here. None of which I ended up liking, but hey, I still enjoyed the experience that I got to know that I don't like it. I like MX style switches, I like clicker switches or tactile switches, and I just don't like low profile keycaps. That's just about me, that's just a, a personal preference of mine. And here we have the Corn V3, which has RGB, which is plugged into my computer. Uh, it has Boba U4Ts, while the Lady 58 has my favorite switches of all time, Kale Box White V2s, and the Piantor just has regular chalk white switches. Maybe I'll try linears because I heard that 20 grams is really awesome, but I'm not very much a linear guy, so maybe you'll see. So about the layer that I use on this specific keyboard and the Lady 58 and the Piantor, just have a basic QWERTY keyboard, which is remapped throughout my software to MTGAP. So outside of the QWERTY uh, usual stuff, you have the home row mods, which is basically the Windows keys, Alt key, Control and Shift, when I hold them for 200 milliseconds, yeah. And one thing I want to notice is that I use tapping turn per key, meaning that the Shift fires at 200 milliseconds, yes, but the other ones fires at around 280 milliseconds. This is to prevent accidentally activating those modifiers, creating some very troublesome shortcuts like the Windows key and the Control key especially. So other than that, on the outer columns, you have the Backspace key, which I've been debating for a while where to put it on the thumb or maybe on some layers. This is the most comfortable spot I have found so far, and I need to do control backspace because I do that a lot. Then there's tab, where most people have escape, but my escape key is down here. Then you have control, of course. A dedicated alt key, which doubles up as an escape key as well. Uh, when I tap it, it is escape, and when I hold it, it becomes an alt. Uh, the idea behind it is that I don't want escape to be too far away because I use it for NeoVim and Vim. Then you have the lower and raise button, which allows you to access your other layers. I still have a, a last shift key on the enter key, just for the times when I need caps lock. I don't need caps lock usually, but sometimes I want to type in like those angry sentences and all capital letters, so it's there for that. Then you have space because I'm a right-handed person. And then you have the hyphen key here. I'm hesitant towards either keeping that or putting double quotes, but I would usually use this because I use hyphen and um, the underscore symbol a lot when I'm coding and when I'm writing and I'm on, when I'm speed typing, basically. Moving on to the next layer, the lower layer, which is basically symbols and numbers. Numbers are on my left hand. And I really like the fact that I can do numbers with just one hand. I really like the positioning of the zero, despite it being a central column, because it's such a memorable place to remember that zero is at the center of the left part of the keyboard. You have your usual shifted uh, QWERTY symbols on the top, no comments on that. And you have all of the other symbols here. So you have the lower cases here and the upper cases here. Like, if I do lowercase um, symbol on QWERTY of the equal sign, it's, it is equal, and on uppercase it becomes plus. Same thing with tilde. The only exception here are these three. Uh, this is just to be symmetrical with the parentheses above, the curly brackets and the square brackets, uh, mainly because I use curly brackets more than square brackets in programming. And then you have the two slash keys, forward and backward slashes, which is kind of intuitive, to be honest. 
One thing that I should mention is the vertical bar right here, which I put to the leftmost part of the keyboard. I find it quite handy and it's the only symbol which I could not find the spot to put it in. I did not want to put it on backspace because I want to be able to backspace, enter, space in all layers. So I keep all thumb keys the same in all layers and backspace the same, tab and control. The raise layer has all of my function keys from F1 to F12, which is spread out like this. Then you have the volume keys, which I use a lot also. And then you have the arrow keys. The arrow keys is somewhat inspired by Vim, but I don't use QWERTY on Vim, so I don't mind moving it a little bit to the right. And then you have at the leftmost part, home key, at the rightmost part, the end key. And I thought it made sense and it's very intuitive. Then you have the delete key, page down, page up and insert. Uh, control tab and alt tab is just to switch between applications and tabs, which is very handy. The most interesting part here are these shortcuts. Alt F4 is to close the current window or the current app. Windows plus V is for the paste bin in Windows. You can basically paste something that you have copied a while ago. Windows plus dot is for emojis. Uh, Windows Shift S is just for screen capture, and I think you can notice that. Um, I tend to do a lot of screen capture. Maybe you don't notice that because you don't live with me, but I do that a lot when teaching especially. When the Alt J or key is something a bit specific to me because I do write in French and I need my accents. So when I hold down Alt J R, it becomes like this. It's like uh, the French accents, you have E, uh, accent circonflex, E, accent aigu, E, accent grave, uh, E avec le tréma, et O dans le E, et A dans le E, C, C, T, U avec accent, A avec accent, uh, all of those things. One key that is missing though is the U with circumflex accent, which is used to spell the word cost in French, which is coût. And I'm going to add that later on. So the last layer is the adjust layer, just to adjust the RGB of the corn and also to control the mouse with my keyboard. You have also the previews and next button, which is used to just circle around pages, going previews and next. You have Alt Shift Down, Alt Shift Up, which I use for VS Code and IntelliJ to move things around and to duplicate lines. Then finally you have Control Alt Delete, which is there to just basically enter Task Manager. But that's about it. That's my whole layer that I use because someone asked me in the comments how do I use it? Mm, what kind of layer do I use? Do I find it comfortable? Overall, I really like this layout. Maybe you can suggest me something. Uh, one of the things I want to change is that I want to move around the backspace and the enter key. Maybe put the enter key here and just, uh, just rely on home remotes altogether. But for now, I don't think I'm really good at shifting with the left hand. With the right hand, it's okay though. I can just like efficiently detect when I'm in shift mode or pressing the J key or maybe like the H key on MTGAP. So if you want to suggest me some changes on this layout, feel free to leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content, like or dislike depending on how you found this video. Maybe. In the future, I'm going to acquire a second cord from Falbatech and I hope it's going to be good because it's made out of wood and it really has that fancy case that I'm hoping for. Anyways, that's it. I'm out.